Hello and welcome to the first Mr. Tie Dye video of 2021. First, I want to apologize for being gone for so long. Uh, last December, I took some time off. Uh, we were getting decided to get me and <laughs> sorry, Julie and I decided to get married on 12 12 of last year. So I took some time off for our wedding and then we went right into the holidays and then I just didn't have any inspiration to do tie-dye I just all the craziness in the world uh, I did a lot of meditation and praying for peace in the world that's what I felt drawn to do but now I'm back to some tie-dye here so what I did was kind of go back to the last inspiration I had, and that was back in December of last year. Uh, we had the winter solstice, and on the winter solstice, we had the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that came together on the 21st. And it looked like, I guess in some areas, if you could view it uh, with clear skies, which here in Oregon we couldn't, but it looked like the Star of Bethlehem. And when I was sitting in meditation last December, I did have uh, a inspiration to do a tapestry of the Star of Bethlehem. So, but being that I was taking time off, I didn't get around to doing it. And now I've been blocked. I haven't had any inspiration. So I thought I would go back to where my last inspiration was. So I apologize for the long ramble, but if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know I tend to ramble sometimes. So what I'm going to do is tie the Star of Bethlehem onto this tapestry. So what I've done is I'm starting with a tapestry that's been uh, pre-washed and then soaked in soda ash and then spun out so that it's just barely damp. That's my preferred method for folding and tying things up is to have the tapestry barely damp. So what I've done is fold it in half. Here, let me see. This here is the bottom and back side of the tapestry. So I just folded the, the front together. This here is the middle seam down the middle of the tapestry, which is what's facing me here. And what I'm going to do is have the star I folded the tapestry in in quarters and I can see that this here is my fold line right there for halfway. I don't want the tapestry or the star to be directly in the center. I want it to be raised up a little bit. So I'm going to now from the center, I'm going up just like six inches here. This here is going to be my new middle. middle. This here is where I want my star to be. And I'm also going to put just a little bit of a mark on my tapestry because I'm going to do the points at different lengths. So the ones that are going up and down and straight out, I want to be longer. And then the ones that are gonna go into the smaller spaces, I want to be a shorter star, so our point. So I just wanna make sure that I keep track of where my, my top is because that's the point that I want. So that's why I put this little mark on both sides so that I can find that later when I'm doing my folding. That'll make sense here in a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do right here, this is the center point that I marked, the center of where I want my star. So I'm just going to fold the tapestry in half right there. So once again, this whole side here is the middle of my tapestry. And then I went up six inches from the exact middle and marked where I want my star to start. So that's what I'm folding in half along. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, so anyway, so this here is my first fold. So I folded it in half and then in quarters and I'm going to fold one more time. So I'm going up and like I say, this here I know is going to be my top point. So I fold that up. I'm basically just lining. This here is the center of the tapestry. I'm just lining it up with this other edge here doing a regular airplane fold. And I'm going to pinch here and here. I'm going to pick this up and I'm flipping this side underneath. So that this here edge is going to line up right here also. 
So I'm just going to pick it up and flop it and that just put that edge. So now I have my three edges and this here once again is the top of the tapestry. So I got those all lined up there and I'm going to go ahead and flip this over so that I can see that top edge once again. And now let's see, what do I need? I need a straight edge. Okay, so like I say, this here is the top of my tapestry here, and that's where I want the long point to be. So I'm going to come all the way up, just within a couple finger widths of the top of the tapestry. This here is not, this is my own personal choice. You can make it come to wherever you want. You could also put the star directly in the center of the tapestry. I just wanted mine up at the top just a little bit. So I'm going to put just a little bit of a mark right here because I know that's where I want the top of my star to be. And the other one, I'm going to have a much shorter point. So I'm going to put a line down here. And then the other thing is how big my star is going to be. So I want the star part to be small and to have the long beams on it here. So now I'm going to draw these lines in. These are going to be my fold lines. So this here is my really long one, and then this is going to be the short one. In fact, maybe I'll make it just a little bit longer. I'm going to move that line up one more inch. Okay, so here's where I put my original mark. I just decided to move it up just a little bit further there. So this here is the line that I'm going to fold down and then up across here, and then I'm going to tie that off. So I'm going to start with the long fold first, Just that's just my the way that I'm doing it. You could probably fold it either direction, but I'm going to start with the long one. And I'm just going to do little pleats. My main thing is just trying to get this line that's down here lined up nice and straight against the line that's on the, the upward facing pleat here. I'm just lining those up nice and straight. And with a straight line, that's fairly easy. But when you're working on something like a heart, you have to kind of twist the fabric. But I'm still doing the same thing anytime that I'm doing a, a pleat like this, whether I'm doing a straight line or a curved line, is putting this bottom line up onto that face right there. And eventually I'm going to make a video where I can draw a bigger spot and show that in more detail. And I think that's one of the main questions that people have is about this pleating in here. So I'm going to try and get a video done for that soon. Like I say, I haven't done any videos yet this year, but I am feeling called to get back to it. So that's where I'm at. And I appreciate, I've had a few donations come into my channel, and I appreciate that. And I still have most of the members that signed up. Uh, to help support my channel. I certainly appreciate all of that support. So thank you guys for hanging in there with me. And I'm not sure that I'll get back to the live videos, but we're going to just kind of figure this out as we go. Okay, so now I'm at the end of this run, and this is another one of the tricky things. I like to have, when I'm coming all the way to the end, and then I have this sharp corner i got to fold, I like to have this be on the downward side. So when I fold this last pleat up, the end of this line is at the bottom of this run right here. I know that's hard to see, uh, but this line is at on the bottom, basically on the table. And what I'm going to do then is take this other line here, and I'm going to twist the fabric, and I'm going to bring it up and around, and I'm going to match this line up with this line. That's how I fold around these corners here. And it just takes a matter of just kind of twisting the fabric, and once you get that lined up, then you can kind of work it over and fold that edge down and once again line the next line up so it's going straight down there. And it basically, it just puts a little extra dimple in the fabric right here. So I'm going to finish folding. This here is the short line the short point that we did. I'm going to finish that out 
and this run here at the end, it doesn't matter whether it's up or down, this time it just happened to be on the upward side. So now making sure that I still have my point in over here and my point here, make sure that those lines are still lined up because sometimes when you're folding, especially like on a heart, when you get down around the corner there, you can kind of pull this out of there. So I want to make sure that that's still lined up nice and perfect there. And then while I'm holding all of that in place, that nice straight line, I'm going to wrap in whether you guys use uh, kite string or you use sinew or you use rubber bands, whatever your tie-in method, you're going to want to tie this up. I just happen to like kite string, but there are many ways to tie this up. And what I recommend is people find what's most comfortable for them and what works the best for them. Okay, now I'm going to tie this off and then we're going to just scrunch up the rest of this. But basically everything on this side of the line is my star. So this here is the, the middle of the star here, the point, and then I'm going to have the long point come up this way and then the shorter point go out that way. So, but for now, I'm going to scrunch up the rest of this. Okay, there is the uh, Star of Bethlehem. It's going to be an eight-pointed star. Four of the points are going to be long, and four of the points are going to be short. So I'm going to get some gloves on, and then we're going to put some color on that. So hold on. Okay, we're back to put some dye on this thing. So what I'm going to do is dye the star in yellow and the rest of the tapestry is going to be in mostly purples but I'm going to put some blue and then a little bit of black over the top. So the blue that I'm using is, uh, well I guess this here is a mix of royal blue and bluebird both from Dharma. Oops. So I'm going to put a little bit of that down first on this outer edge here. And I want to dye, since I'm going to put yellow here and purple here, I'm going to put my dark colors down first. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white space and let them the dyes kind of spread. In fact, maybe I'll go ahead and put that on right now so that dye can get to moving on its own. Whenever I'm laying down dark colors and light colors next to each other, I don't want them to blend a whole lot. Sometimes I don't mind if they touch just a bit. But this is the way that I do it. I, I lay my dark color down first and let it start spreading. So I'm just going to keep on coating this and I have just over a finger's width worth of white space here between this line. So I'm just adding purple dye to the back side and just letting it slowly spread towards that line. So that's that's how I try to, to do it for myself, and I have pretty good luck with getting the colors to come right up and maybe touch just a little bit. So now I'm going to put some more blue out on this outer edge. And then it'll be covered up eventually with purple. I just want to kind of get a variety, so this here is a, a blue mix that I have going on. Like I say, royal blue and bluebird. This here is just straight bluebird. Oh, and also, all of these colors are a little bit old. I've been kind of storing them in my fridge here so that they last longer, but I haven't actually tested to see just how long they will last. So this here is going to be kind of part of that unofficial test. Because this die says it was mixed up on 12-5. But it's been in and out of the refrigerator mostly, so we're going to see how that works. All right. And now the rest of this. So I, the purple I put down to start with was plum, and now I have a purple mix. And I don't remember what all is in there, but probably at least two, maybe three of my purples. Sometimes when I get down to the bottom, <clears throat> of bottles like this one here is just a little bit out 
but when I'm down it to the end of a bottle, sometimes I'll just pour them all together into one so that I have at least a, a decent sized bottle instead of this much in the bottom. So I'm just taking a peek. I can kind of see a little bit of purple coming through, but I want to get a little bit more just to make sure I have, oh, I guess I should put that in the frame. So I'm just checking the bottom to see how my saturation is coming along here. Like I say, this is where I first put the purple at up here close to this line. So I'm probably going to add another coat of purple around here before I flip this over and dye the other side. Now one of the things you can do that sometimes will help press the die in faster is to actually use some pressure. So I use my cuticle pusher here. It's got a nice blunt edge on it and I can use it to kind of just press on that die. And as I'm pressing on this fabric, I can see the, the die kind of puddle up there. But as soon as I release the pressure, then that die soaks in. So I think that really just kind of helps move that die through the fabric. So especially up here next to this white line, I want to get this dye soaked in and moving so that I can then add my yellow. I try to get this purple to spread all the way up to, but not quite over that white line on its own. And this last little bit of pressure is just going to make sure that that dye spreads as far as it can but once I put my yellow on, there won't be any more purple to spread. It'll be just the yellow spreading that way. And the yellow can't overtake the purple as much as the purple can overtake the yellow. I hope that makes sense. So. Now let's take a peek here. Yeah, now I can see much better color coming through. It looks like up here I still need just a little bit, so I'm going to add that right now. The purple dye coming through right there. It's still not all the way up here, but I don't want to get it all the way up to the line because then the purple might spread over. So I, I still like to work back from that line. It takes a little bit longer this way, but the results you get are worth it. So it's just a matter of applying a little bit of dye at a time and working it in. That's looking much better there. I think I'm going to go ahead and add my yellow to the star, and then we're going to flip this over and dye the bottom side. Make sure my hands are good and clean. And this is just lemon yellow. So we're just going to add this on. And like I say, this one here, I'm just going to go right up to the blue. I'm going to leave a little bit of line of a white line still and let the yellow spread on its own. But I'll go ahead and saturate the rest of the star back here. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean this tip on my cuticle pusher and then I'm going to press on this yellow here. So I'm basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm helping that dye soak in just a little bit faster and it's helping push it and move it just a little bit. And I can still see just a little bit of a white line here. Kind of right where I drew my, my blue line. So I'm just going to touch up right there on that line. And this is going to put just a little bit of this yellow right on the purple here, which is going to just give it a little bit of a different glowy color there. It'll lean into a, a tanny brown, but I think the overall effect isn't, isn't too bad there. But it's just a matter of getting your die to move around and helping it move where you want it to. And just spending the extra time 
pressing around, but it can be done. So, once again, I'm going to put my purple on right up here next to my line, but still leaving a white space. Then we're going to add some of this blue around like we did on the other side. Both of the blues. <clears throat> and then we're going to cover that up with the, the purple mix once again. I'm just going to poke that down in just a little bit. Get this die moving just a little bit here. And I can hear and see lots of liquid moving around in there. Sometimes if I think I have too much, what you can do is take a clean dry towel So what I'm going to do is just soak up a little bit of this excess because sometimes you get too much dye moving around and it's hard to can control all of it. So, and I know this is hard to see sometimes because I'm putting a dyed thing onto a dark towel, but that's all I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's a clean, dry towel. I've laid this on, on there and now I'm just going to cover it up and just with a little bit of hand pressure, this is really just going to soak up a little bit of that excess dye, but it's also going to press some of that dye down deeper in. This is going to help with the saturation level. So, once I get that done, then we're going to pull that back up out of there and just toss this towel in the laundry. Okay. I can still see that I need to bring my purple line a little bit closer up here. So that's what I'm going to do now. And like I say, I wanted to get some of that excess liquid or dye out of there before I worked too much because it might just bring all of that liquid up here to this spot. And I didn't want that. And these bottles here, I bought these on Amazon. They got this nice fine metal tip on here. It holds four ounces of the dye. And I do have a link to these where I bought them on Amazon. Uh, there's a link down in the description below this video. If you use the link that I provide to make a purchase, then I get credit for it. So it's just one more way that if you're going to buy something, you might as well use the link that I provide so that you can donate a little bit to me without it costing you anything. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get this the rest of the way saturated. And now I'm going to go ahead and dye the rest of this star. Once again, I'm starting back here. And I'm going to squish that in and let it soak in like I did before. Okay, now I'm going to touch up the rest of this. I'm bringing this yellow all the way up to the purple now. But like I say, since the yellow is much lighter than purple, it can't overtake and discolor it much. The only thing that's really getting discolored is just this very fine edge where they touch. So this here is the way that I like to put contrasting colors next to each other, is work with that dark color first, get it moved up, take out the excess by squeezing it, and then use the the yellow in the same fashion and just bring it up slowly and then you can have 
two contrasting colors without a bunch of brown mixed in there. Um, I'm going to set this aside to batch for 48 hours. Oh, let me peek down in here just to make sure I don't see any white spots. I don't think so because I did saturate it pretty good. I can see some of my blue highlights in there, but I don't see any white. And then the other thing that I was going to do is just take and put a little sprinkling of black over top of this. Just on the, the purple and blue spot here. So this is just kind of a, a quick little extra black over top. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then since I have so many layers of fabric, I want to make sure that that black soaks down in there. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of a poke just hopefully so that there's not black on just two parts of it. It hopefully soaks all the way down in there. And I can see more of my purple blending here. So I'm going to go ahead and before I put this away to batch, I'm going to use two rags and sandwich this in one more time just to soak up some of that excess. Because sometimes it's while the, the tie-dye is batching that some of the contamination happens because there's so much liquid in there and the liquid really just wants to equalize itself. So if it's drier in one spot and wetter in another spot, that wetness or the dye is going to travel to the dry spot. So if once you get it saturated well enough, then you soak up the excess, then you don't have as many issues with the contamination. So let's wipe that up. Lay our bottom two rags down. So I'm just I just put a double layer of rags here. And lay that on there. And then I'm just laying. Actually, I got three more on top here. So and I'm, I'm just <clears throat> using my weight to press down on there and just make sure that. I'm pressing, this here is the star part, this here is the rest of it, so I'm making sure that I'm pressing equally on all of the parts. Because if you push too much on one side, you might just press all of that liquid into this other area here, and you don't want that. So you want to make sure that you're pressing here. Let me take this off. So I was pressing here and here, all the way around this whole thing here. And now, I think this here is going to be good to sit and batch. Like I say, I can't see any white spots in there, so I think I got good saturation. And my yellow is looking pretty good. So I think I'm going to call that good. I'll be back uh, when I open this thing up, and you'll see the results. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie-Dye. It's been a while since we've had one of these, but we're going to get this Star of Bethlehem opened up. Yay! Yeah, that's looking good. All right. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right. There's our Bethlehem. I'll get this washed and posted later.